<laughs> so I think you, many of you know me already. It's always a pleasure to be here at St. Margaret of Scotland. My name is Father Joe Corpening, and um, of course I come sometimes and help out Father Ed on the weekends. And I've done several of these talks uh, last year, this year. So let's just start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we offer you this gathering this evening, this learning about your church, the people of God, during the period called the Middle Ages. We ask that during this meeting we might conduct ourselves in a manner that's always pleasing to you, and that we might accept with any with patience and grace any challenge or difficulty we may encounter. St. Francis de Sales, pray, pray for us. St. Margaret of Scotland, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. <clears throat> well, we're going to cover a thousand years tonight. <laughs> so take a deep breath, fasten your seat belts, I thought at the beginning I would, there was a very dear, very well-known Jesuit church historian, Father John O'Malley. Some of you might know him. He has many, many books, kind of a national figure. And Father O'Malley died about a year and a half ago at age 95, very long and full life. And I'd known him for a number of years. I never, I was not as a student, I knew him as a colleague. However, uh, I was, had tuned in to a um, uh, program they had at Georgetown University where he was located. And it was to talk about his final book, which was basically his autobiography. And there were several of his former students who were there who are all, you know, uh, professors of history, one at Georgetown, one at Loyola University of Chicago, etc. And they told a story about him when they had him as a teacher, and apparently he taught a survey course in church history. And they said his mantra was, there's no time, there's no time. Yes, that's an interesting topic. That's an important topic, but we have no time. So that's going to be kind of my mantra tonight. Um, hopefully, you know, it, and it's reflective sometimes of the speaker's own interests, you know, but I tried to pick um, highlights of the Middle Ages that were important and hopefully will help us to understand a little bit better what went on during this period of a millennium, really, of a thousand years. So these are the, these, this is the time period given that Father Ed gave me. 476, which was when the last Roman emperor was deposed, and 1453, which was the fall of uh, Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks. Now, some people, some historians, you know, may uh, fool with these dates a little bit. Some would say, well, maybe the Middle Ages ended with the Reformation, so with Martin Luther when he puts up his theses on the church door at Wittenberg. Uh, some people say, well, the Middle Ages ended with the discovery of the Americas by Columbus, so 1492. So, you know, just to kind of be aware, aware of that. <coughs> Which do I? It's Usually it goes, do I get this side or? Uh, I, I honestly don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> so what is the Middle Ages? I mean, how did the Middle Ages get its name? The Middle Ages are one of three major periods in European history. And for the most part, I'm going to be talking about Western Europe. I'm not going to talk so much about the Eastern Church because that's kind of like a whole other story. Um, so the three major periods are antiquity, which would refer to basically uh, 
the classical period, Greek and Roman history, uh, even before that, uh, the Middle Ages and then modernity, which they reckon to begin with um, you know, the 16th century. So Renaissance humanists were the first to coin the term Middle Ages, and the word that they used in Latin was medium avum. And it's from that word that the adjective medieval is derived. So they used that term to distinguish their own <coughs> period, which was characterized by a revival or a return to classical learning and culture from what had preceded. So, I mean, this, the humanists were also a little bit self-serving. They wanted to kind of bolster what they were about and kind of consider that they were, you know, we were, the history was kind of coming out of a dark period and now they were bringing this light, which was a return to classical learning. So according to the humanists, the decline <coughs> of the Roman Empire ushered in a thousand year period of darkness and ignorance which marked a break with the ancient Greek and Roman world. And so this is how the Middle Ages came to be called, and we sometimes hear it called that, the Dark Ages. But historians no longer necessarily consider the whole period that way. There are pockets within the Middle Ages that, yes, were pretty dark, but uh, that is not uh, necessarily descriptive of the whole. <clears throat> The Middle Ages themselves span a thousand years, and they can 